So right now, welcome to the new trading week. The market just opened, and then I think this is the best time for us to review the market quickly and also see the next move that we are actually watching out for. So I already gave us a review that the basic tools that we're going to use while analyzing the price action from the group. So I told us that we should get conversant with how to use the trend line. Then the horizontal line is for the key levels. And then your channel. So these are the three tools that I put in place. So there are some pairs that I'm actually um, looking out for this week. I'm looking at Euro card, GDB card, Euro EU, a good number of pairs that I'm actually looking out for. So, so I'm going to use that those pairs to experiment what uh, the background have given us so far and how you can use it to approach the market. So like here now, this is for Euro card. So basically looking at this prediction from the daily time frame, you can notice that this is a key level and this is actually a key level on this pair. And you notice that price has been ranging from these zones. So this key level helps you to restrict your view while trading. It makes you not to look at vast areas. So it's very easy for you to sell from this stock and you buy from this low. So then what you now look at for lower time frames are the nature of the candlesticks. So here is the daily time frame. So I can decide to go to a four hour. And from the four hour, I was able to place a trend line here. So why? Because I noticed that price is ascending at a particular momentum and they are maintaining the same base diagonal. So now it's very simple for you to trade this pair. This is from the two hour chart. Okay, let me use the one hour time frame. So when you look at this pair, this is how you, you, you approach this trading. Basically, you should know that this is the Asian section. So the Asian section is um, the area of volatility are focused on its currency, just like the AUD, the New Zealand, the Japanese yen, as we enter into the Tokyo section. So this is Euro card. So this is not the, the moment for the momentum. So it's very easy for you to approach this pair right now. So what you have to do is you have to apply patience and you have to wait. So now, how do I trade this pair? Because what you have to basically look at while trading for it is your risk reward ratio. So now, if I'm to trade the Euro card, now, the basic information you have here is that as far as price is within this trend line, is above this trend line, you're going to keep buying because when you notice the price movement, price bounces here, buy, it bounces here, it made a flag, and it kept buying. So are we expecting the same flag or this reversal candle here? Is the price going to follow the bearish momentum from here? So what you're going to do at this very level, if you are to take a trade instantly, you are supposed to buy because you have prices very close to this region. Then you have your stop loss. It's going to be tight. That means a breakout will invalidate your setup. And this is the top. That's where your take profit is. So you notice that you have up to one is to five risk reward ratio. So, but personally, I'm looking for the downside on this pair. So that's what you need to understand the forest. Whether you are buying or you are selling, um, that is not um, actually the issue. The issue is, are you a good money manager and do you manage your risk? What are the things you watch out for before entering the market? So this is the scenario here. So for me, I'm personally wait, waiting for the open of the London section. That should be from 8 a.m. So once I'm able to have this break, once I'm able to have this break, because that's what I'm expecting, I'm going to have a break. So once price breaks down and starts forming a flag, 
once price breaks and starts um, forming a flag, I'm going to um, sell the pair. I'm going to sell the pair. So I'm going to sell the pair. So the market is just opening. And there's a gap already. So I'm watching out for as long as that momentum keeps going down and goes below this trend line. I'm going to take the breakout and sell. Well, maybe at London session, notice that price took up and retest. That is price did um, something of this nature. Um, let me make use of the annotation. Notice that price um, went this way. So you notice that price bounced, retest. So you have to buy. You have to buy at that point. But if you notice that price um, decided to break out, break down. So at the, at the corrective way here, you are opting for yourself. So I'm giving you, uh, I'm just giving you traits that are having very clear setup for you at this point in time. So one is this euro card. So just make sure you take notes. So just notice what I did. I made use of my key level. I made the use of my I made use of my key level and I made use of a trend line. It's as simple as that. And I look out for the candlestick patterns and entering at a lower time frame. You can see there's already a, a, a hanging man here. So that's the bearish um, momentum and I believe we can all see it. Yeah. So that's the bearish momentum already on the chart. So, but for you to be safe, just wait for the open of the uh, London section. You're going to see price take up and bounce, you buy, or price break down and take this way to sell. So that is very, very good. And these are swing trades. These are swing trades. I will still show us ways that we could and scalp the forest market. So this for Euro um, GDP. I think almost something is applicable to card um, um, GDP. So this is for card GDP. So I'm still going to go to a higher time frame. This for the H. Okay, this is for the weekly. Already on the weekly. Okay, I need to extend. I have to extend this zone now. I really want to extend this zone. This is a zone I have. So I don't need to ignore this zone. So this on the weekly, this is the candle of last week, is a very strong bullish momentum. So this is something you have to know. When, when there's a new week, try to check the candle of the previous week. So it's a bullish momentum of the previous week. This is your monthly time frame on GDP card. And um, these guys are having the same base. So if they're having the same base, this could be, um, this could be, this could be an inverted hammer. So that means that's a sign for a bullish move. And this month is already on the move. So since it's on the move, on the weekly, we have a bullish move that has broken this key level and still going. So I go down to the daily. I notice that. Um, price broke out of the daily, closed um, with a hanging man because it is up to to third of this whole uh, movement. So, but using my trend line as I taught us on my lower time frame, I noticed that um, price is trending along this trend line. So. So what I'm going to do is to, I'm going to wait for price to close properly. I'm going to wait for the open of the London section. So this GDP card, so I have nothing to stress. You can see that they're already showing momentum either to continue or to break the low. And remember now I was able to extend this level. You notice that I extended this level on the monthly time frame, and you can see how it's rhymed on the one hour time frame. I did it before us. So that's a sign that 
you must um, be able to practice how to identify your key levels. So which I'm going to share a YouTube video, one of the videos that I did, so that you can actually be able to identify your proper key level. So at this moment, if I really want to rush into the market, I will take a buy, take a tight stop loss here, maybe 15 pips or 20 pips thereabout and move. But I would want um, the sections to open. I wouldn't want to rush into the market. So I'm watching out for if there is a correction. I will watch out for a sell. If there's a break, a break below, I'll, I'll keep selling the pair. So here is a critical point for me at this moment. So you have to take note and take advantage of these trades um, that I'm showing you to us right now. So there could be um, likelihood for price to continue to move to the upside from where it is. So that's for um, GDB card. Then we're going to look at um, we're going to look at New Zealand USD quickly. So this is this is New Zealand USD. So, so I'm going to go to the monthly time frame. So if you look at the monthly time frame, you notice that there's a bullish momentum on this pair. And this is a key level. This green line is a key level. You can see the price is the 562. Look at the level. Okay, I stopped here. But if I place my, you notice that it's a key level. So we're still on the bullish momentum from the monthly time frame. So even if you are scalping on the one minute time frame, five minute time frame, try to know the momentum of the candles at monthly, weekly, and daily so that you will not be overthrown by the uh, momentum of the market. So coming down to the weekly time frame, so this is the move, the first swing, this is another swing then. We're already on that move to the upside. You just notice that price is battling with this key level. It's battling with that key level. So that's a critical level for us. So you just notice that you break above that level, is going to usher the price to the upside and um, a break below is going to bring it down so um, if you look at the, the pair critically you notice that price has actually broken out and these are exhaustive candles so this is sign of indecisiveness and i told us that we should study um, the japanese candlestick i gave us the app to install so make sure you install the app that i recommended install the app it's a very nice app it has a lot of simulations like games it has a lot of questions. It's going to train your mind to master the Japanese candlestick. You're going to master it because for you to be a good price action analysis, you have to be very good with your Japanese candlestick. So this is the bullish momentum, and then there is a key level. Price has broken this key level, and these are signs of exhaustions. So because of these signs of exhaustions, we can be watching out for a continuation from the upside. There is a possibility for having that continuation to the upside because of this level. So you have to keep that on your radar, on your radar. So though we are also looking at the momentum at which price is going up at this level. So the market just opened. I don't advise you rushing. So I also want you to wait because this is the, the decisive zone. So all you have to do is just to wait. So price um, closing above here properly, that's from 8 a.m., 9 a.m. So we're gonna keep buying price closing below. It's for you to keep selling. So it's a critical zone. It's a critical zone. So it's not something you need to rush. So even if you rush and take a buy, it knocks you out and closes below. You take the sell once you maintain the same risk level and your your um once you maintain the same risk level, you're gonna make higher um profit potentials. So you are still keeping an, an eye on the pair. So you don't miss that, you don't actually miss it. You don't miss that. Just like that was what happened there. You see a move and a flag here coming below. There was a, an expectation for it to come down. It didn't come down, it went, took another flag. What you do is just to buy, and this is what happened. So these are some things you watch out for and you play along with patience and maintain your risk management. So that is for, that is for New Zealand <coughs> USD.
<coughs> so because sorry, we're already having some bearish momentum. So you're gonna allow price to play out here. You allow price to play out because these are the times that the brokerage firm, the interbank market, the market makers, and the rest of them could make money from you. So you can have the appetite to go with a high risk and decide to, you know, <coughs> make a whole lot of money. You see a lot of traders and losing so much before the market starts playing out. So I'm giving analysis for the week. So it's not actually something to rush about. So on that pair, we are keeping an eye on is on gold. Gold has been on a bullish run for a very long time now. So, so we are actually keeping an eye on gold. Don't mind what I drew here. All you have to watch out for the market key levels and you watch out for your channels or the trend line. So something you have to see at there is a, a range for the price between 1817 and 1797. Some persons will have 1800, so they are all the same. So um, I was able to take some scalps. So this is just a flag. Price is just trading within the zone and it bounced and it's closing um still above this line and if you notice there's a trend line going from here on a lower time frame there's a trend line going this low this low and coming here it's cutting across so there could be a likelihood of price breaking lower or taking the move up so here is just like a vertex so i expect once price open i expect price to keep bouncing higher so if you see price breaking lower and correcting we are selling so the critical level for gold is one 1797.45 so you can decide to um write that out wherever you are so i'm giving you pairs that are ripen to make money for the week so because sometimes your setups may not be ready in price action that's what you need to understand your setups may not be ready so you don't need to force the market so gold is not open. I think from 10, from 12 a.m. gold should be open, or probably 11 a.m. depending on your broker. So we're expecting that push to the upside. So if it breaks lower from here, it's going down. So these pairs I'm giving you now have good potentials for the week. Um, another pair we are looking at is the New Zealand in Japanese yen. The New Zealand Japanese yen. The Japanese yen is 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 at its critical level so the japanese yen is a pair that is either AUD JPY, gold um sorry usd jpy or the xxx jpy are trading on a on a on a weak support right now so we are watching out for um some sort of price action so here on New Zealand yen, we had this sell here, but we're expecting a flag and for the continuation, but this flag is not looking like it's, it's continuing. It's, it has a push, then a flag for a bearish move or a bullish move, and it's still making that flag. So let me go to maybe 30 minutes time so that you can see what I'm saying. You need to understand what how a flag looks like. This is an impulsive move. This is a strong move. This one is corrective. This is a strong move. That is understanding the charts. So, but when you look at this move, this 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 corrective move is dropping. It's dropping like a wedge. So when you look at this move, it's dropping like a wedge. So, and you know what a, a wedge does. I told you to study your chart pattern. So when you have a wedge, um, there's a likelihood that you're gonna have a forceful move to the opposite direction because this is a, a falling wedge. So you have that move one, and there's some kind of crappy move here now. So that's what we're looking at. So, so at this level, we are watching out for this old flag. So for us to be on the safer side, we may decide to let 
this whole flag to play out and then take our trades um, when price breaks the top or when price breaks the low. So you may be wondering why must I wait? I wait because I trade as an investor and I always want to make out money from my trades and not actually trying out with real money. So out of all these trades, even if you're able to trade one and it's good and you put in all your best into that one trade, you're gonna make all the money that you require just on that one trade. So these are swing trades that are gonna take you all the way long. So it's at a critical level. So I call it a critical zone. So it's an area you have to watch out for the price action. So you have to watch out for the price action. And this is a 30 minute um, time frame. You may be wondering, can't I trade lower time frames? Yes, you can trade lower time frames because um, when you go a little bit lower, this is your five minutes. So if you have to trade some of these zones, you notice that you can just scalp the range. If you have any range. So here now the price has, I think, the price has opened and there's a gap. And most times price will want to push and cover this gap. So first thing I decide to put a stop loss here. So that to have a stop loss here. You enter and you take profits here. So that's that's for a quick scalp. It's a stop loss, and we're entering at um, 70, 32. This is um, 70, 20. So you are risking 12 pips and you are targeting, okay, from 23 to um, 90. Okay, you're risking five pips and you're targeting um, about 19 pips or thereabouts. Almost 20 pips. So, so it depends on your approach on the, the market. It depends on your approach. But to be on the safer side, you allow the whole zone to clear you allow it to clear. Then another pair we're gonna look at is the USDJPY. So already remember that we have a trading opportunity on all the USDJPY pairs. So if something is happening, you can notice what I just told you on that pair. The market opened with a gap and it's trying to close the gap. Does it actually close the gap here? So that's another opportunity for you you know how to trade gaps. Once you see a gap, this gap happened, they see that the market tried to close, 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 and has closed it. So um, as far as the market closes it, not just closing it, it decides to make a move higher and a flag. You have to take your buy from here and have a stop loss below the gap. So we're gonna still keep an eye. So let me look at it from a higher perspective. This is a higher time frame. Um, on the monthly, it's a bullish, it's a bearish momentum. So it's coming back to our support at 106.66. So that's what we are watching out for, the buys. So this is on the weekly. You see that price dropped here and we're already having some buy um, momentum. So let me delete this line so that you can see it clearly. So we're really having that buy moment here. Then this is the daily time frame. Just the, day, the close of one of them, Friday had to touch and exhaust. So if you had the buy limit, would have been in the trade. So but we are, we are still taking advantage of this support at 106.6. Price is at 106.89. So barely 20 pips different. So we are looking out that USDJPY is going to take up the buy positions from there. So now looking at a lower time frame, let me stay on, on the one hour. So you notice what I'm showing you, you see that this is an impulsive move, just like I've been sharing um, with us. So these are simple techniques you need to master. So this is an impulsive move. And the next one you are seeing there is a corrective move. So 
there's a likelihood that price could ascend from there. So if paraventure you see price bouncing here, you are still bullish because price can bounce and still take to the upside. Unless price breaks the low, then watch out for sell. So our bias on USDJPY is still on is still on the upside. So that is why we we had our arrow pointing from current levels to the upside or from this support zone to the upside. So if you are buying, you have barely 30 to 40 pips to risk. So and remember this week is the week for the banks. So uh, the Bank of Japan, the Bank of Canada, the Bank of England, the European um, Central Bank. So a lot of them are releasing data from the bank this week. So it's going to be a volatile week as we watch out So for that. So even at the opening of the London section, I think that could give you a clearer perspective to work on this. But by then we could know the strengths of yen. So we're going to go quickly to um, the next pair that we have before we start taking um, questions. Okay, I think I've shown you some opportunities from the Canadian pairs. So I showed the Euro card, GDP card. The same is applicable to some other card pairs like the card chip. So we're having um, something here for card chip. So I'm going to go to the higher time frame. So already on catch up, we have a strong bearish momentum. Price is pushing strongly to the downside. So but I'm just trying to wait for price to break out of, of this region. So this is a flag. If once price breaks out of this region, I'm taking my sell order. So, but if price takes a support from where it is currently, price could decide to take a support from here and decide to spike up. So, it's good to be patient and allow the structure of the chart to play out. So, that's another um, nice pair. So, that's why sometimes, that's why I need to understand that analysis and trading are not the same. You can see someone analyze anywhere on YouTube or very mentorship and while trading the person is going to trade something else and you will follow maybe because you see this arrow up you will just follow the arrow so but with this I'm, I'm showing you the reasons why you should um, take any decision that you are supposed to take so here is another um, wonderful pair I've been trading this on check in had this climb on the trend line. I told you I had money in my trend line on the lower time frame. So I watch out the candles from the higher time frame. I get the key levels from the higher time frame. Watch the momentum of the candles and come down to the lower time frame with my trend line and my channel. So the, the chart pattern looking out for information. So when you look at this pair from the monthly time frame, never mind the joints, you notice that um, this is a region that price has been touching and there is a possible break last two months and at this point I'm saying this is a double top for this pair. So when you notice, when you look at it, you notice that there is a double top, there's a point here, point A, point B, a double top. So price is swinging from this high, coming down, touching again and not just a double top, there is a strong pin bar here at this region for the weekly. So that, that is a sign of bullish assumption. So we're gonna we're, we're looking out for a down move, but this down move is not is not gonna happen quickly. That's what you need to understand because of the drastic drop of the previous days here. So this is from here, this is 57, and this is okay, that's 100 pip drop. So sometimes you can see price correcting halfway, that is up to 50% level before dropping. So that is why we use the Fibonacci tool here. So this is the, the pin bar here. So we use this Fibonacci. So I'm going to, I'm, I think I'm going to delete this 
and do it again. So I use the Fibonacci. So here is where I do apply my Fibonacci at the rare occasions. Because um, some of us are actually so much accounting. Isn't it? So I just hold it from the high to the low here. So this is just um, the low of this candle, this is the low and this is the high. So I try to dictate. So I use it to dictate um, So I use it to dictate um, the levels of this candle. So I'm just watching out for a retracement. That's why I do this rectangle shape. I'm watching out for a retracement back into the zones, into the 50% and this is 1.8 level. So just take note, the 60%, the 50% and this is 1.8. So any retracement back to those zones, I'm watching out for Excel. So that's going to be from my lower time frame. So this is my hedge four. So you can see that price is already correcting. And that's a bullish flag. So, so if you are supposed to be trading, you should not be selling. This is a, a bullish flag. This is a bullish move. This is a bullish flag. So if you are supposed to be trading that way, currently, you should, you should be buying, but not also for second, so the bigger move that we're watching out for. So, so you can decide to buy into the zone and have a tight stop loss. You can put a stop loss from here. The price is already touching the top. So once you can have a tight stop loss here. So Basically, price could continue going, break even. It can possibly break off this zone and take a support here. So that's a continuation, and that invalidates the double top you had. So that is something you need to watch out for. So just like I told you, you're already watching out on the yen pace. So once yen is weak, it's going to affect all the yen pace. So once yen is weak, it's going to uh, deactivate the sell buyers on check here and we're going to keep buying. So that is what you need to understand. Once you have your, your analysis from a higher time frame, you have to watch out clearly on the lower time frame to know what and what to trade. Because just from this price, this is 62 and here is 1362 and um, here is um, around 14.00, so that's over 40 something pips. So that could be your target for the day. So that's why on the higher time frame, we have a bearish pin bar, we have double top that is signed to sell. But you should know that if you are selling, that means you're having a stop loss from here to here, which is um, over 100 pips. So if you can go for that, you come down to a lower time frame to sort out for your entry. So if you're entering here, you just have barely 15 pips to risk or 10 to 15 pips and you're targeting 40 pips. So, but I'm going to wait for the open of the London section. This analysis I'm doing, I'm going to also show you when I'm going to enter the trades and also show you the outcomes so that you can have confidence in yourself. So that's for Chef Yen. Okay, we're looking at Cardian. So we're also looking at the GDP pairs. I'll show you the GDP card. So we're also looking at the GDP pairs. Also looking at the Euro pairs. So these are mostly um, pairs that have that have released from the bank. And um, I told you the site that we're, we are, the site that we're using is forexfactory.com. So, this is forestfactory.com. I believe I've gone through the site. I've always told us time with that number that we should go through this website. So here, you come here and click more. And okay, I, I think I clicked this through. So ensure that everything is marked. 
okay i just mark on the news and i'm gonna mark all the chart all the pairs so these are the economic activities for today so this is where you see the level of impact so where you see whether it is high impact or medium impact or low impact so high impact events we already have bank of england the governor belly speaking so with time i'm going to teach you how to trade speeches so that's the release from the bank you can see on wednesday monetary policy statements from japanese bank then the canadian bank is coming up on tour on wednesday also by 3 p.m and then um, aud unemployment rate from their bank on thursday euro bank 12.45 on thursday euro bank GDP bank coming back on Friday. So we'll have a whole lot of release from banks this week. So whenever you come to this website, ensure that you are using the time. So check the time here. This is 10 45, 10.6. So that's the right time. So if it is not the right time, click on it and you click on synchronize. So most times it's already synchronized plus one hour with the time frame of my AI synchronized time is now this. So you make sure it is synchronized with the time in your laptop or your yeah your laptop or your phone so that you can be able to ensure that these times do rhyme with um the time in your device. So very soon we're gonna yeah this session is gonna close in the next four minutes and we're gonna come back for questions and answers. So here, okay, I can start to click on the filter, click on the filter and um, take away these guys, tick only the high impact events. So I'm watching out for the high impact events for the week. So on Friday, on Monday by 4.30 p.m., the Bank of England is coming up. Tuesday has no high impact event. Then Wednesday has from the Bank of Japan. Then from also the Bank of Canada. And CPI is coming from the New Zealand. Then have an employment rate on Thursday. So what I do at ECB conference. So these are impact events. What I do is to set an alarm on my device. I set up an alarm on my device with these candles, with these events. So I put an alarm like 30 minutes before the time, or at most 15 minutes, so that I can be alerted about events because most of these events are going to play out strongly on the chart. So I don't want to miss out from any of these events. So I ensure I set an alarm. So I remember we also make use of the my Facebook. So I can also look at the phone and ensure that from my, my Facebook app, ensure that I have some those events here also. So there are some high impact events that may not come up on forestfactory.com, but you will see them on my FS, my FS book. So that is really, 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 really important for us. So you watch out for those um, information and do you you can actually utilize them appropriately. So remember what we discussed in the group, the basics. So if you have issues with the basics, please try to alert us so that we can know what to do about it. Ensure you utilize the WhatsApp group to ask your questions. I've given us materials for the basics and also for the class. I gave us for the news, my Facebook forest for the for the Japanese candlestick. I gave us the JCP app. I gave us a chat sheet for the candlesticks. And um, I gave you the tools for technical analysis, which I used here, the horizontal line, the trend line, the equidistant channel. Horizontal line is for the key level and the trend line for lower time frame. Then I told you master your chart patterns on Japanese candlesticks. And I'm gonna give you a simple trading strategy that even as you learn the candlesticks, you can use it to trade the risk management. So that is all that is required of you.
So, hello.